I, I don't want to speak for very long. I mean, in particular, given that we have a, a crowded room, I, I think it's much more valuable to have uh, an interactive exchange than for me to give you um, 40 minutes of, of, of monologue and then have five minutes for questions. Um, uh, in fact, just to, to give an organizing theme to this, I, I, I wanted to, to, as we're, hang a number of specific issues on, on the overall theme of big data. Uh, and the digital agenda for Europe is, is uh, as Eamon said, an extremely wide sort of horizontal policy covering everything from uh, investment in, in broadband networks to, to research policy for, for virtual human brains. Uh, and uh, you could get a long monologue from me if I were to, to cover all of that ground. Um, the, I, I thought it useful to, to, to pick on the big data theme because increasingly I think people are aware that there are massive benefits available from dealing with the, with the avalanche or, or the tidal wave of, of data that is generated online and, and by all sorts of, of, of digital activities. But accompanying these, these challenges there are obviously, uh, sorry, these opportunities there are also some challenges. Uh, and what we're trying to do in the Commission, and, and 2012 is actually an important year for a number of those work streams, is to obviously promote the good and remove the obstacles or, or the concerns or the things that would endanger trust in particular um, that, that might otherwise slow down this sort of very positive development. Uh, and that in particular because now more than ever, all Commission policies are, as it were, vetted uh, by reference to their growth potential. Um, more than ever, we, we need uh, a, a growth story to accompany our policies and in order to get them prioritization in the, the normally relatively slow-moving uh, Brussels uh, political uh, machinery. Um, so some of the things I thought are useful to, to talk about are... Uh, internet security, because of course the security of the treatment of, of, of data and, and of exchanges uh, online in digital form is absolutely essential for trust and, and, and to, to unlock that potential. Uh, perhaps a few words on, on data protection, which is extremely important, I think, for trust by individuals in all that is going on uh, and that is enabled by, by the use of their data online. Um, perhaps uh, a word on, on the, the Internet of Things, the, the increasing tendency of, of, of devices to communicate between each other without direct human intervention uh, for a variety of, of, of useful purposes. Um, and something on public data, uh, namely the unleashing of the, the more or less dormant economic potential uh, that lies in the, the filing cabinets or the, the data centers of public administrations uh, in, in Europe. Uh, I might start on that one because it's, in a way, the most proactively growth-inducing uh, element. The, there exists already a European directive on what's rather unfashionably called public sector information. Um, the, this concept has, I think, got a little bit of a new lease of political life, in particular in the UK and, and, and the US, by being rebranded as open data. Uh, and, and the underlying idea is that uh, a lot of information is gathered uh, for specific public purposes, no doubt well used for, for those purposes, but could be combined or mashed in all sorts of other ways that the public administration doesn't even think of to drive all sorts of useful, uh, socially useful and perhaps also profitable applications uh, in, in the hands of others. Uh, the regime that we have at the moment, dating to about a decade ago, uh, would be uh, improved in, in a number of ways with a proposal that Nelly Kous uh, steered through the Commission uh, in December and which is therefore now on the table of Council and Parliament. The, the key elements of which are, first of all, establishing the principle that any publicly accessible data uh, in the member states should be available for reuse, so that the, 
the, the starting point is that if it's there and is not covered by the Official Secrets Act, then it should be reusable also by private parties for all sorts of promising social and commercial purposes. Um, Secondly, that in principle it should be available at marginal cost, meaning simply the additional cost of, 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 of providing it to an applicant should be, should be the charge imposed, uh, which should again have, a, have an enormous stimulating effect, but doesn't in most cases involve any real loss of, of income to, to the public purse. Um, thirdly, we would argue, or we have proposed that it be extended uh, to various cultural heritage institutes, but there with somewhat more safeguards on, on, on the charging side because their use of their material for, for, um, for self-financing is, is often rather more central to, to their continuing activity. Um, uh, and fourthly, that the material in question should be made available in machine-readable formats. That means that you don't just receive it uh, in, a, in a PDF of an Excel sheet. You actually get the Excel sheet so you can immediately start manipulating the data in useful ways. Now, this, I, I often find when I talk about it, can seem very abstract. Uh, there's one, or just to cite one example, a very concrete uh, and I think immediately persuasive <coughs> example I can give. There is an app available here in Dublin based upon information from uh, Fingal uh, Council and the Dublin Corporation and, and, and so on, which allows you to find um, handicapped parking spaces anywhere in, in, in the city. You, you just click on the app, you, it, it uses geolocation, and it finds you the, the, the parking spaces um, closest to you. Um, you don't have to apply in triplicate to the Department of Social Welfare in, in order to get this information. It is fed to you by, by a service. There, there is huge potential uh, for this, and we would like to, to enable that. Um, on the issue of data protection, this is again an area where the Commission has made a very big proposal uh, just uh, a week or perhaps two weeks ago at, at, towards the end of January. To, to revisit the, the existing European data protection rules, uh, which date to, to 1995. Um, and there we are very much acting in uh, a, a single market sort of logic. That was part of the logic of the original rules, that we would have common rules on data protection in Europe. The, the reality of things is that the implementation of that old directive uh, has led to a proliferation of different approaches in practice. Uh, a, a very, uh, I think, well-known uh, and recent demonstration of that is the reactions in a variety of member states to the picking up of, of domestic Wi-Fi traffic uh, as part of the Street View exercise, where some data protection authorities required the material to be immediately deleted. Others required it, in fact, to be conserved for the purposes of an inquiry. That there was, let's say, a, a degree of, of, of variation in, in how that issue was approached. Um, what is proposed now is a regulation, so a truly common set of rules. Uh, companies operating in Europe would have a single data protection authority that they would address based upon their, 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 their seat or, or of main business. Um, we would establish a, a coordination mechanism between data protection authorities in order to, as it were, work out in practice uh, uh, some of the differences of application that can arise. Um, we would also remove quite an amount of, of unnecessary red tape. Uh, prior notification of, of data transfers uh, when, in, in fact, uh, an ex post uh, enforcement rule may, may be sufficient. Um, much enhanced uh, arrangements for companies to bind themselves either within a corporate group or with their contractual partners when they're transferring data outside of Europe in order to, to get the full benefits of, of, of global cloud computing where 
the actual place of distribution of data is distributed uh, on efficiency grounds and not just on, as it were, narrow jurisdictional grounds. Um, some uh, raising of, of the, the standard of protection would accompany that. Um, there are some new concepts, such as a, a privacy impact assessment, uh, requirements for data protection officers in larger companies which have important data processing uh, activities. Um, uh, the, what has become known in, in let, let's say, uh, in, in familiar language as the right to be forgotten, na namely a, a right for individuals to request their data to be removed from places that they, they had posted it publicly uh, at, at an earlier stage. Um, and refinements on important but contested concepts like what is personal data, what is consent. Uh, this makes an extremely complex but very important proposal that, that we do think will, when adopted, and it won't be uh, fast, uh, I would think, um, will massively enable a truly European, if not even international, uh, uh, economy of services built upon personal data, but with a level of, of protection that reassures people, uh, and which can de facto export high standards as well, because a common European market working to that standard will be hard to, hard to ignore. Um, I, I mentioned uh, cloud computing uh, there in, in passing, uh, and th th there are of course, fashions uh, in, in, in jargon, and, and digital jargon is, is no exception. There, there are plenty of people who say, well, this is in fact a concept that was there 15 years ago and was perhaps a little bit ignored when the era of the PC was, was with us and, and is now back. But it, it, it's back in a big way, namely this idea that uh, huge amounts of information can be held uh, much more efficiently and processed much more efficiently for individuals, but perhaps more importantly for companies, uh, in centralized data centers uh, with much lower capital investment for individual business users, for example, um, with the use of all the expertise that, uh, th that uh, centralized cloud providers can bring. Um, but it is, again, like many new business model is something that comes with, with fears and, and, and concerns and uncertainties. We're uh, working uh, under Nelly Kruse's stewardship on a cloud computing strategy for, for this year, hopefully out by the summer, which would address issues like jurisdictional and liability uh, uncertainties, um, uh, things like standard model contract terms uh, that, that could, could gain traction in the market. There's a research side to it as well. Uh, but perhaps one of the more concrete elements which she announced uh, last week uh, is a, a European cloud partnership between the, the private and the public sector. The idea here being that public sector purchasing of, uh, of cloud services represents 20 or perhaps 25% of the market. And if public sector purchasers can agree on common specifications, not, not only technical ones, but contractual ones, security specifications, liability specifications, uh, this can be an enormous push to developing more or less standardized approaches in, in, in the market. And that can itself be an enormous, uh, give enormous impetus to, to this concept taking off in what is typically in Europe a rather fragmented landscape of, uh, of differing practices in both the public and the private uh, sector uh, procurement uh, area at the moment. Um, I'll, I'll close on the issue of, of internet security more generally because I, I think I have already broken my promise about not doing a monologue. Um, the Commission will bring in, in autumn of this year an internet security strategy for Europe, uh, which will combine a, a number of elements. But one of the most important ones uh, 
would be to, to put on a legislative footing what has for the moment been worked out in, in softer ways be, uh, between the Commission and the Member States uh, obligations regarding the setting up of, of national authorities responsible for, for internet security, uh, certain baseline or benchmarks that, that such authorities would need to meet, uh, establishing requirements for holders of, of uh, of data or other major operators online, so that would be um, telecom companies, but also, let's say, banks or energy companies that, that, uh, whose operations are completely dependent on, on, on online uh, security, uh, uh, obligations for them to notify security breaches to these authorities, uh, something that telecom companies are, are already required to do, but we think it can be generalized. Um, and to create incentives for private sector players to take network security more seriously. At the moment, despite the absolute centrality of, 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 of the broadband network to the functioning of society, government, and the economy, uh, in a lot of quarters, security is seen as a cost uh, as something to be minimized, therefore, and, and not as something that is so integral to operations that, that it needs to be right in the heart of, of strategic planning. Um, that's uh, a, a fairly rapid run-through, but perhaps not rapid enough, but uh, on that basis I would be certainly very happy to, to take questions or engage in discussion. Thank you. Okay.